Hi everyone, this is a lesson on binary fission. Now, binary fission is basically like the mitosis for bacterial cells. It's the process that ensures that the daughter cells are genetically identical to the parent cell in bacteria. Okay, the good thing is it's a lot simpler than mitosis, and we'll get to that uh, on the next slide. Um, so basically here you've got your bacterial cell. So as we know, cells reproduce, and in bacteria it's in a very similar fashion. It's by cell division. So this cell here will divide and we'll end up with our two daughter cells. And obviously the, the essential process and the, the thing that we have to make sure of is that the genetic information, the DNA from this parent cell is going to be copied and passed on by, in an exact manner so that you get an identical copy in each of the two daughter cells. And that process is called binary fission. So how does this process happen? Well, let's start simply with our bacterial cell. My diagrams are probably going to be pretty simple here, so forgive me. Um, okay, so bacterial cells, much simpler than eukaryotic cells. Right, so this bacterial cell, it doesn't have linear chromosomes, because remember it's prokaryotic. Prokaryotic cells don't have linear chromosomes, they have a single circular chromosome. So there it is, a single circular chromosome made up of DNA. Now, like in mitosis, the first thing that needs to happen before this process can take place is that the DNA will need to be replicated. So that replication takes place and this blue circular chromosome that I'm drawing is the copy of that DNA. So now that that's taken place, we've replicated our chromosomes, what happens next is they actually attach themselves to the cell membrane. So the red one becomes attached to the cell membrane there, and the blue one becomes attached to the cell membrane there. Now that they're attached to the cell membrane, it's simply a matter of the cell growing. And when the cell grows, the membrane grows. So the membrane starts to grow and get further apart. And then what that does is it pulls our chromosomes further apart because remember they're attached to the cell membrane. So our chromosomes are becoming further apart. And then once the growth of the cell membrane has pulled those chromosomes far enough apart, the cell membrane will start to do what it does in telophase in mitosis, which is the process of cleaving itself into two. So we've got those chromosomes there. Oops, that's not attached very well, but you get the picture. They've been pulled apart to opposite ends of, of the cell. The cell will start to cleave itself in two right here. And then, as you know, what happens eventually, and I'm going to have to draw these arrows up this way. Sorry, but I did tell you this diagram might not be the best. We're going to end up with one cell like so, and another over here like so. The circular chromosomes have been separated. They are now in two different daughter cells, and because they were copies of each other from the original cell, they are identical to the parent. So following through, we had the original cell, the circular chromosome replicated, it attached to the membrane, the membrane grew and pulled those chromosomes in opposite directions. When the membrane was big enough and the cell was big enough, the membrane started to fold in the middle and cleave the cell into two, which meant that we produced one cell over here and a second cell over here, and both of those cells are identical to the parent cell, which means that binary fission has been successful and that's that process summarised. Um, so again, apologies for my shoddy diagram, but hopefully the explanation helps. And uh, thanks for watching.